Yes, nothing better than a day at the beach. Time to take a much needed break from solo shuffle. <laughs> Wait, who's that walking toward me? <laughs> oh, it's the 2400 achievement. <laughs> Did I have too many drinks or is this really happening right now? <laughs> Wait, no, something's wrong. Is this a sudden plot twist? Designed to crush my hopes and my dreams? Maybe I did have too many drinks, but I gotta get out of here fast. These ways, they're getting bigger. I don't know if I can make it. Is this what I think it is? Oh, it's the flavor of the month. Rerollers. No, make it stop. This can't be happening. Tell my cat that I love him, and for the love of God, never let this happen to anyone again. <sighs> all right, enough with the role play. Let's get serious here, all right? If you're looking to push to higher ratings, there is one concept you need to understand. It's that Arena is just a predictable series of waves, <laughs> but not like these. Instead, every game can be understood by this simple chart. Throughout every arena, there will be moments where your team's pressure peaks, but on the flip side, there will be other times where the enemy team is on the aggressive and suddenly your team is under stress. Don't believe us? Well, look at the damage chart from the recent AWC. At different stages of the game, one team would be at their peak while the other team was in their valley. This happened at regular intervals for the majority of the game until someone died. Every high-rated game plays out like this, whether you're a duelist or playing in a professional tournament. Knowing that these waves exist is one thing, but to take things to the next level, we need to know how to make your peaks as high as possible, while making your valleys more manageable. This means doing two things. The first is making your setups deadly to have the highest peaks, and the second is to be efficient with your defensives to perfectly counter your opponents. We'll be introducing both of these concepts throughout this guide from the perspective of someone who wants to push Duelist and beyond. Everything in today's video is built on the same concepts we teach at skillcap.com. For every single class, we have easy to follow damage courses, which include master and minutes guides that teach you some secrets for dealing maximum burst damage. These go hand in hand with our crowd control and defensive courses which were designed alongside Rank 1 Gladiators and condense years of PvP knowledge into easy-to-follow guides. We're the only service that offers a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. We do this because our service is proven to work, and if it doesn't, you just don't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Anyway, let's get started. The first thing you need to do when climbing is to really focus on making your setups deadly. The higher you climb, you'll find that healers are way better than the ones you faced at Challenger or Rival. Suddenly, it's not enough to turn the game into a PvE fiesta, because better healers will simply outheal or outtrade all of your team's damage. This is why, in order to push to Elite, you absolutely need to create picture-perfect setups with your team by combining damage and crowd control. Maybe you think you already do this though, but at this rating, you really need to be perfect. The meta is filled with healers that can pump out 60,000 HPS, which means you can't just brute force kills with damage or use your CC randomly. Instead, you need to sweet spot your kill attempts by always pairing your burst damage with micro CC, which can be done by literally every single spec. Take this game as an example. Here we are following a Fury Warrior that's currently hitting the enemy Mistweaver, but let's take a closer look at his decision making. Notice how he realizes that the Hunter is a clear win condition once Cocoon is forced. And look, his recklessness and thunderous roar are ready, and that means the game's over, right? No, you can't rush this. We can make this more guaranteed. That's why he opts to delay his offensive abilities to match his fear coming off cooldown. And now, by combining a full fear onto the enemy healer and a storm bolt onto his target, 
he's able to reach a true checkmate situation, with his healer even being able to squeeze in a hex due to the cross CC. Okay, so we've discussed the strength of micro CCs and instant control, but what if you play with a class that has spammable CCs? Should you ignore them because someone told you that Polymorph isn't worth using anymore? Absolutely not, although your primary objective should still be to maximize your damage output there may be times when you find yourself free or in a favorable position to control the enemy healer, especially before unleashing a big burst of damage. In those situations, you should always take advantage of your crowd control abilities and go for it. Want to see this in action? Well, pay attention to how our mage pushes up as soon as he realizes that combustion is about to be off cooldown. Here, he recognizes a potential win condition, but to make the setup more guaranteed, he delays using his combustion until after CC lands on the enemy healer. Instead of just sending damage for no reason, everything lined up perfectly to make the kill more likely to happen. Coordinating damage and crowd control is even more crucial in the early stages of the game. That's because in low dampening situations, using your entire burst on a target without controlling the enemy healer can be a complete waste of a cooldown since your burst can get shut down with an easy one-to-one -one trade. Instead, if you sync up your CC and burst, it can potentially force both a trinket and a major defensive, resulting in a two-to-one trade, which is the sort of thing we're after here. And note that this concept applies not only to crowd control, as in some situations simply combining your damage with an interrupt can be the difference maker. For instance, consider this game where we're following Vinruki, who has the enemy team on the back foot. Although the pressure is all in their favor, the positioning of the enemy priest isn't allowing for an easy polymorph or fear. Instead, he combines his burst with a quick counter spell on the priest's penance cast, which is enough to force bubble from the red paladin. No matter what comp you play, recognize that CC determines the tempo of a match and is what even allows you to reverse enemy pressure. Still not convinced? Watch this arena match against an arms warrior, red paladin, and a fist weaver, which is easily one of the most deadly and explosive comps in the meta. The team we're following is moments away from losing the game as they don't have access to life cocoon or trinket from their healer and while the warrior doesn't have die by the sword. However, as the enemy team begins their big push to close out the game, our paladin manages to clutch out an insane move and blind the entire enemy team while following this up with a hammer of justice which forces out multiple defensives from the enemy team. And moments later, by making use of the fundamental that we just explained, the micro CC from a DR'd leg sweep and storm bolt is enough to score a kill because it was combined with burst damage. By now it should be clear how micro CC helps you manage your team's aggression, but what about dealing with the burst from your opponents? If you've been watching the series and putting the concepts into practice, we're guessing you've made it to duelist or at least climbing to higher ratings. Now, you might have noticed this the hard way, but players at these ratings tend to know their burst sequence, and most of the time, for the very beginning of the match, they have a clear strategy and target selection. This means that someone on your team, usually yourself, is bound to get blasted by every offensive all at once, all while getting chain CC'd. At least for the first go, that is. After that, everything goes back to the usual chaos that we all know and love. But here's the thing, at the beginning of the game, everything is ready for both teams, which means as long as you can get over the initial wave of damage, the rest of the game will mean your opponents have disjointed cooldowns. Let's take a famous meta comp as an example, Ret Warrior. The warrior has Colossus Smash every 45 seconds and Avatar every minute and a half while the Ret only has wings every minute. Not to mention some specs like Unholy Death Knights, which always have unsynced cooldowns like Gargoyle at 3 minutes CD, Abomination Limb at 2 minutes, and Dark Transformation every 45 seconds. In both situations, the common ground is that everything will always be synced up at the start of the game, which makes it crucial to trade your defensives as soon as possible, and with high HP if you're the one under pressure. 
With damage being so high, it's possible to die in a single global, so the moment you see major offensives being used, you should not even think about the decision to trade. Now, you might think it's your healer's job to save you, but there is a chance that they're stuck in CC early into the game, which leaves you to fend for yourself. On top of this, if you trade at high HP, your healer might recognize this, which allows them to hold on to their cooldowns for the desynced damage waves that are coming later on in the game. To make your cooldown trades as efficient as possible, we want you to literally trade defensives like a robot. And what this means is matching the value of your defensives as close as possible to the value of the enemy team's offensives. Think about Avenging Wrath, one minute cooldown with a major damage increase. Now think about Bark Skin, also a one minute cooldown with a similar damage decrease. This is a no-brainer. If you trade skin instantly into wings, it means they're always lined up. In fact, these exchanges are best thought out in advance. Before the gates even open, you should think about what offensives the enemy team has and then plan the most efficient one-to-one -one trade with the goal of being able to trade as quickly as possible just like a robot. The same can be said for utility spells like Disarms, which can be perfectly matched with cooldowns like Pillar of Frost, or even using Intimidating Shout to match an enemy warlock's demonic tyrant. Trading defensives like a robot means developing the mentality that Arena is like a raid encounter and you're reacting to a boss mechanic. This even means thinking about your PvP trinket as a major defensive trade. Classes like Rogues have multiple defensives with the same two-minute CD, Cloak of Shadows, Evasion, and Vanish. Ideally, Trinket will be traded in order to use at least one of these, which means having some leftovers to deal with the disjointed offensives that pop up in the middle of the game. Trading like a robot even applies to mobility cooldowns. Taking Warlocks as an example, both of your major defensives can be used while stunned. Your teleport and gateway obviously can't, but this means if you want to make the most out of your trinket, you could pair it with teleport to instantly avoid damage, assuming you've already traded your other defensives one-to-one. -one. Even for specs that have limited defensive cooldowns, the logic still stands. Arms Warriors might only have Die by the Sword as a personal defensive, but trading it early and one-to-one -one into a major offensive is still ideal, as later on, you can fairly easily deal with sustained damage with your raw tankiness, making constant use of Ignore Pain, Defensive Stance, and Impending Victory. Now at the other extreme, classes with multiple defensives like Monks should always look to trade their lowest cooldown first when given the chance. This gives you a higher chance at being able to use the same defensive twice in a single game. So if you can survive a go by just pressing Touch of Karma only and holding on to Dampen Harm, Diffuse Magic, and Fortifying Brew for later, it means you have a better chance at surviving in the later stages of the game when Karma comes back off cooldown. The goal of trading like a robot is to allow your healer to save onto their abilities for more unexpected situations, disjointed timers, in the constant stream of high damage, especially in dampening. If you aren't trading one-to-one, -one, your healer is going to struggle way more than they should. Now, in the end, World of Warcraft PvP is all about who can rotate cooldowns better, and it's no wonder that a team like Luminosity Gaming continuously wins in the AWC because they're the best team in North America when it comes to making efficient trades. The key to winning above 2100 is understanding that every arena game has its offensive peaks and defensive valleys, and it's up to you, as the player, to know where you are. If you're nearing your peak, make it as strong as possible by perfectly syncing your burst and control. Don't neglect the strength of micro CC or even interrupts during kill setups to make your burst matter. And after that, get ready for the enemy team's turn as you go into a defensive valley. Now it's time to think about efficient cooldown trades. If the enemy player has a cooldown ready, think about what you'll instantly press if it's used on you. Try and be as fast and efficient as you can by planning in advance. The data's there. Climbing rating means having the highest damage peaks possible and having a response ready for every go. Fundamentals like these are exactly what we teach at skillcap.com. 
we've taken years worth of PVP knowledge and condensed it into easy to follow courses, which include the quick tips that you can learn in a matter of minutes. Our Academy courses have helped players hit their rating goals for over a decade because we work directly with the best players in WoW to teach you everything needed to rank up. That's why we're the only service that offers a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. We do this because our service is proven to work, and if it doesn't, you don't pay. Visit the link below to learn more. Anyway guys, that wraps it up for this series. Let us know what topics you would like us to cover next from 0 to 2400.